I just want to officially welcome you to our fourth annual outdoor service. This started as a harebrained idea and a rental or a borrowed tent with holes in the ceiling that almost fell in on us the first time we put it up. So let's just say we are doing a little better today. We want to welcome you here. My name is Chris. I'm the lead pastor here at Dresden Community Church. We are so excited to have you here today and for the morning that God has laid out for us. I just have a few announcements for you today. Number one, there's a bunch of front row chairs here. That's what we say for the late people. You got to sit up front. So we got some extra spaces up here in case you're outside and you want to be under the shade. Also, if you have children ages three and down, we have nursery available for you inside the church. All you go is inside the gym there and then to the hallway and turn left. Three and under for nursery today. We will have, if y'all want to crane your heads backwards, do you see the tents about 100 feet back there? That is going to be our Rock Church station, so ages 4 through 12. I'll tell you when, about halfway through the service, we're going to invite the kids to just head back there with our awesome Rock Church leaders, and then afterwards, I will give you some more instructions. Uh, normally, on a Sunday morning, we pass the plate and do an offering. We're not going to do that today, but we are going to have offering buckets. They're blue on that side there and that corner. So if you brought an offering today, we want to give you a chance to give that. But if you are a guest today, please don't feel any pressure. You just being here is enough gift for us this morning. All right, I want to do one thing with you before we get started today. I want everybody to take out their cell phones. I know you have it. Don't, don't look at me like that. Don't pretend like I don't own a cell phone. I would never bring a cell phone to church. Take out your cell phones. Let me, let me see them. Okay. If you are not on our email list, all you got to do is send an email to dcc at kent.net, and we would love to get in touch with you. Even if you have no service here, dcc at kent.net, just say hi, and we will reach out to you. We won't spam you. We'll just get to know you a little bit better. And after you are done putting that in, dcc at kent.net, I want you to put your phone in the offering plate as it goes by this morning. <laughs> no? All right, you can keep it. But we do ask you to turn the volume down and put them away so that we don't uh, hear them this morning. You don't want to be that guy or that girl who goes off in the middle of the service. With that all said, why don't you stand up this morning? We are going to pray and invite God into this tent. Let's bow our heads together. Father God, we thank you for this absolutely gorgeous day this morning. We thank you for all the hard work, all the prayer, all the preparation that went into making this morning happen. And now, Father, we just ask that you would come and fill this space with your presence. God, we are so excited to be here. May we taste and see that the Lord is good and experience the joy of the Lord this morning. Everybody said? Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be here with you today. Um, for those of you who are new today, we welcome you. Um, some of these songs are, are familiar to us, and they might not be to you. Um, feel free to sing along if you'd like, or if not, just enjoy the music. But we will have words available up here on the screen, or on the tent, acting as a screen today. Um, but we also just wanted to say a happy Father's Day to everyone here who is a father. Um, we also know that this can be a hard day for people, missing fathers, grieving fathers. Um, maybe we didn't have fathers who were the kind we hoped for. But we just want to acknowledge um, every man in here who has been like a father, who stepped in, who has helped somebody, given them a ride, given some wisdom, shown them a, a, you know, something that they needed to understand about life. We just want to acknowledge and thank all the fathers here today. And so as we begin, we just invite you to sing along with us.
a scene. Thank you so much, worship team. We want to give you an opportunity now for all our Rock Church kids. If you are age 12 or under, please follow Miss Angela and our all-star crew just out the back of the tent, and you can make your way that way. If you've still got a little one and you want to stick back a little bit, no problem. You can hang out on the outskirts of the tent. But we want to give them a chance now to head out. We're going to continue in worship this morning and sing one more song with you. So as the kids are making their way out, I'll turn it back to our worship team.
And I thank you, worship team, for leading us so well this morning. We appreciate you, and we appreciate every single one of you who came out today. This has got to be one of my favorite services all year long. Anybody else agree with me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, 20 people. I'll take it. Listen, here's why. Let me tell you why I love this morning. I love being outdoors in God's creation. What a beautiful day with just enough breeze. Thank you, Lord. I love the joy on everybody's face where we get to change things up a little bit. And hey, I love seeing all the new faces that we see on a day like today. So we just want to welcome you. Why don't I give a round of applause for all the new people who are here with us this morning. Man, we appreciate you. We've been praying for you. And we just want you to have an incredible morning with us to celebrate, to sing, to learn something that will change who you are when you leave here today. Now, some of you in the room, you have been to church for as long as you can remember. You don't remember a time of your life where you didn't go on Sunday mornings, and some of you, this might be your first time back in forever. Maybe you have never been to church before, and it was too scary to go inside the building because you don't know what kind of crazy people are in there, right? But you'll come outside because there are exits in every direction. It's safer out here. And listen, I get it. And if that's you, I want to tell you something this morning that the rules have changed since 40 years ago. Do you know what the rules were 40 years ago? You sit in your chair and you be quiet the whole time, no matter how long that pastor preaches. How many of you grew up in that environment? A few of you, yeah? The pews, the harder, the better, because they kept you awake and you didn't drift off in the morning. And you were to sit there and be silent the whole time. And I want you to know this morning, that's not how we roll as a church here. We want you to express yourself. We want you to take part. And hey, if you want to say amen at any point in time, we don't, allow, we don't just allow that. We encourage you. You want to practice with me? Amen. Okay, you guys are pretty good at this. Let's try it one more time. Amen. All right, so if you ever feel that welling up inside you this morning, you don't have to hold it in. You can let it out. The rules have changed. So we're going to pray this morning before we dive in. I just want you to know how glad I am that you came today. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this space. We thank you for this time. God, we believe that there are no accidental appointments in your kingdom, and we trust that we are all here because you called us and guided us here. So Holy Spirit, lead and guide us this morning. Take this time and use it for good. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to start this morning by showing you a picture. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to do because we're outside, but here's what it is. I want to show you a picture that absolutely terrified me about five or six years ago, and I don't know if you can make out what that is. Can you see what it is? That's an eyeball. That's gross, right? Now, it's not just the fact that that's an eyeball that's weird, but man, do you see how big it is? It is about the size of a small watermelon. Okay, this is somebody's two hands, a big guy's two hands is holding it, and I remember scrolling through my news feed, and I found an article that said this eyeball just washed up on shore one day, and it was lying there on the beach. How's that for a good start to a morning in the sun? <laughs> Man, that's, I mean, that's weird enough and terrifying and gross enough, but here's the crazy thing. Can you see how large it is? The wild thing about it was they brought in scientists and they brought in experts, all sorts of people to try and figure out what kind of creature this came from. And the wild thing is they had no idea where it was from. So marine biologists and scientists studied it and examined it, and here was their conclusion. They concluded that there is no creature in the ocean large enough to have an eye like this. So let me just tell you, this is why you don't swim in the ocean. <laughs> Can we all, there you go, right? Can we all just agree that there are reasons why God gave us legs and not fins? Because there are literally sea monsters that we don't even have cataloged out there, and if you go out, you go out at your own risk. So that's why I, I'll swim in swimming pools, I'll swim in lakes, but man, I ain't swimming in the ocean for all the tea in the world. <laughs> Be careful when you are out there. It's not just what we know about, it's also the things that we have cataloged and seen. I mean, there is this place in the depths of the ocean called the Midnight Zone. How many have heard of it before? There is a place so deep and so dark that not even sunlight from the sun makes it all the way down, and it is deeper than Mount Everest is high. In fact, you can fit three Mount Everest on top of each other and still not reach the depths of the bottom of the ocean, and inside that scary space, there are creatures like this. 
Can I repeat my instruction? If you walk away with nothing else today, here's your word. Do not go out there. <laughs> Do not go out there. See, I was watching this National Geographic episode, a documentary. Anybody else like animal documentaries every once in a while? I'm eating my popcorn. I'm watching, listening to James Earl Jones narrate this terrifying fish. And he says something really interesting. He says, he says how do they do it? How do fish live in thousands of pounds of pressure, crushing in on all sides every single day? How do they do it? And I'm like, man, I don't know. How do they do it? I say, what is it about them? They don't have exoskeletons. They don't have submarines or wetsuits. Like, what makes it possible for these fish to withstand pressure that would crush the strongest submarines that exist in the world today? And this is what he said afterwards that I never forgot. He said, here's what it was. Their secret is not what's on the outside, but what's on the inside. He said, the thing that gives them the ability to handle thousands of pounds of pressure crushing in on them every single day, it's not some structure on the outside, it's what's on the inside because they are filled with the same pressure that's pushing out as isn't pushing in. The thing that gives them ability to withstand all that the ocean throws at them is what they are filled up with. And I want to talk to you this morning about what exactly that means, not just in the ocean, but in real life. Because in my experience, every day, every week, I talk to people that are feeling the pressure. How many of you this morning have felt the pressure of life this past year? Okay, four of you. Fair enough. <laughs> How many of you in the last month have felt stressed at some point in time? How many of you have felt tired at some point in time? How many of you are pretty sure after reading the news, the world is about to end? Man, that's every single day. And if you have felt the pressures of life, I want to speak to you this morning because God has an answer to all the world that is crushing in on you. God has a solution to the pressure that is pushing you on all sides. All that family drama, if you're here with them today, just blink twice at me, <laughs> right? All that financial stress, all the ways in the world, all the kids' questions, everything that is pressing in, God has a solution that nothing else will deal with the way that he can. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. The simplest solution and the way I want to unpack today's message is this. The way you hold up under the pressures of life, the way you hold up is by being filled up. Can you say that with me? The way you hold up. Okay, let's try that again. Come on, come on. The way you hold up is by being filled up. The way you hold up by being filled up. God, teach us that this morning. There you go. I'm going to read for you a piece of a letter that Paul wrote to a church. And man, if you're not used to reading the Bible, this is the word of God preserved for us through the years, but it was human authors that wrote it down for us. So this guy named Paul wrote a letter to a church that he loved in Ephesus. And we're going to read just a few verses together of it this morning. We're going to read Ephesians 5 verses 15 to 20. And I'll I'll share with you what that means. This is what Paul said. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish. Understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs from the Lord. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul, he kind of starts off and he, he says something that you all have experienced this morning. He says that the world and the days are dark and evil and all you got to do is turn on the news to realize that that's true. Amen? You, gotta, you can't possibly think that the world is how it should be when you see all the wars and the conflicts that are happening around the world. And so he says this, he says, be wise every single day because the days are evil. And it almost feels like the world is out to get you. You ever felt that before? You ever felt like your day could not have possibly gone worse if someone had architected it for you? Right? Everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. And you stop at the end of that day and you look at me and you say, Lord, what is going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. The world is broken and you have an enemy. And this is the world that we live in. So he says, be very careful not to live as unwise, but be wise. And then he gives this one line, powerful, life-changing statement that just seems so simple 
And it's not. This is what he says. Be filled with the Spirit. This, this is his answer to the question that we were posing about all the pressures of life. How do you hold up? How do you withstand it when you're walking through the valley? This is Paul's answer, to be filled with the Spirit. Now, what he is not saying is this, be filled with good vibes. How many of you get texts sometimes and you're going through a tough time and your friend sends you a text and says, sending good vibes your way. Do you ever get that? Can anybody here tell me what that means? Because I don't know what that means. Sending good vibes your way. Positivity, just kind of channeling it in your direction. And, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong. Podcasts, they're not enough. You could have Jocko Williams in your ear every morning screaming at you to get going. And this is not what Paul is talking about here. He says, be filled with the Spirit. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit that can live in you. And he's saying the solution to life's problems, the solution to the pressure that you feel and I feel every day is simply this, to be filled with the Spirit. It is not what's on the outside, but what's on the inside that matters. To hold up, you need to be filled up. You see, if this is the solution to the problem, the question is, well, what problems are we experiencing? And I think if this is the cure, what is the disease? I can come up with two things that Paul is alluding to and explicitly talking about here. One is that so many of us, we are filled up with nothing and we just feel empty inside. And there are others of us, we're just filled up with the wrong thing. The solution to both of these things is the same, to be filled up with nothing or to feel empty or to be filled up with the wrong things. So let's, let's tackle that first one first. Some of us in this room, can I talk to all the exhausted people out there? Any exhausted people? Man, you're like too tired to put your hand up even, right? It's like calling out all the introverts. Introverts, put your hand up. They ain't doing that for $1,000, right? I can guarantee you, as a cross-section of the people that I know, this room is filled with exhausted people, and I want to talk to you this morning. Those of you with young kids, man, I'm talking to you. Those of you that are grinding away at work way more than your hours are normally supposed to be, I am talking to you. High school students in the middle of exams, you're supposed to be tired, but you're not. Grandparents out there, you're looking after more kids than you ever had yourself, right? It wasn't supposed to be like this. They were supposed to have flown the nest. You were supposed to be empty nesters, and now you've got three times as many kids in your house as you ever had yourselves. Truth is, so many people today that come to me during the week, they are exhausted. They are running on empty. And I want to talk to you this morning because so many of us, we started out this season with a full tank of gas, and now we are running on fumes. We had energy, and we don't know where it went. And so you're taking every supplement known to man trying to recapture it, right? You're staying up late just to steal back a few hours that your kids stole from you in the morning. You are running on fumes, and the solution to that, Paul says, is the same. It is to be filled with the Spirit. When I was 16 years old, I was a camp counselor. If you've ever counseled kids at camp, you know what I'm talking about. The very first cabin of kids I ever dealt with was a, eight, a cabin of eight six-year-olds all at once. Man, I never even babysat one kid, and now I was in charge of eight. And all day long, do you know what I heard? Question. All day long. Chris, where are we going? Chris, what time is lunch? Chris, where did Jimmy go? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Chris, what do I wear today? Chris, what am I supposed to do? All day long. Man, I would walk, I would walk from our cabin to the dining hall and I'd have to hold their hands in a line. I was like a mother duck with her ducklings coming along <laughs> everywhere I went because I lost one half the times when I just moved from one place to another. Remember at the end of that week, after six days, you think you're invincible and you're a teenager, man? At the end of six days, I had like 30 minutes to myself. And I went down to the boat dock where there were no children. It was the only place. I sat in a rowboat. I buried my head in my hands and I cried for like 20 minutes straight. <laughs> now, I meant these weren't tears of sadness. These were tears of exhaustion. I was empty in a way that I had never experienced before. I didn't have what it took. I didn't have the right answers. I didn't have the ability not to respond harshly to these beautiful, annoying little children. And so I needed in that moment something that I was going to need over and over again for the rest of my life. I needed something not outside. I needed something else inside. I needed the Spirit of God to come and fill me up, to give me the energy. Parents, to give you the patience 
to give you the ability not to snap at your coworker, to give you something supernatural on the inside. Because listen, I can't give you three ways to fix your life to solve that kind of energy crisis. But do you know what I can give you? I can give you access to the God who will live inside you and rescue you from it. So if you're feeling this morning running on empty, just soaking up the last bit of fumes, the solution is not, is not some new podcast, man. The solution is the living God inside of you, giving you energy, giving you pressure and perspective to keep on going. So the solution to feeling empty is to fill up on the spirit of God. Now, that's the first problem. The second problem is not so much an emptiness problem. It's not a vacancy inside. The second problem is this. You're filled up with the wrong thing. And this can happen all throughout life, too. That somehow you end up kind of drinking in the wrong thing. And it's funny. He uses wine as an example. But, man, there's like a thousand different things that this could be because we fill up our lives with various different kinds of things. And Paul says this. He says, be very careful. Live wisely because if you fill up on the wrong thing, guess what's going to come out when somebody bumps you? Guess what's going to spill out of your cup when life gets hard? Guess what's going to come out when you're running through the deepest valley that you've ever been through? What's going to come out? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be the stuff that's on the inside, right? So, hey, if you're scrolling on Instagram all day long and you're filling up on envy, anybody else filling up on envy all day long? Right, you're seeing all the houses and the cars and the vacations that your friends are doing, and you go, why can't I? Why can't I? Why can't I? And then when your coworker gets promoted at work and you don't, what's going to come out of you? Man, it's going to be envy, right? It's going to spill out of you. For some of you, it's like anger, right? That's kind of your drug of choice. And, and all day long, you read articles that make you angry. Why do we do that, by the way? Right, like why, why do we read things that we know are going to work us up, but yet we're drawn to it like a moth to a flame? And so when you fill up on anger and then you get cut off on the highway, what's going to come out of you? Oh, don't you pretend to be saints in here. <laughs> you're not, how many of you, when you get cut off on the highway, you make the praying signal and you're like, yeah, man, I'm praying for you. <laughs> is, that, is that what you're doing? That's not what you're doing. At best, you're going to give them the fist of rage, right? And listen to me, that's the best possible version of what's going to come out of you in that moment. Why? Because if you fill up on anger, that's what's going to come out when you get bumped. It's not just anger. It's not just envy. Some, some of you in the room, you're like passive aggressive and don't, 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 don't out yourselves here. Listen. But some of you, you're the most dangerous because you smile while you grit your teeth, right? Like you're angrier than anybody else, but it's like building up pressure inside and one day it's going to come out, but who knows who the unsuspecting fool that's going to be standing in the way when it happens and you got to watch out what you fill up on because when you get bumped, that's what's going to come out. The first senior pastor I ever worked with, his name was Keith Ganyu. Anybody know Keith Ganyu in the room? Matt, Keith Ganyu, he was, he was a Pentecostal pastor. He was larger than life. He was a force of nature. And I both loved and dreaded every single day because I never knew what was going to come. And so as I got to know him a little bit better, he told me this one throwaway line, and I never forgot it. He says, oh, yeah, I gave up golf forever. And I was like, that's a weird thing to say, right? I gave up golf forever. And I said, well, why did you give up golf? And he said, I said, didn't you like it? And he said, yeah, well, I enjoyed it. I said, well, why did you give up? And he says, well, because when I'm on the golf course, I remember all the four-letter words I forgot. <laughs> well, it's, it's true. He's a senior pastor. Pastors don't do that, right? He says, I remember all the four-letter words I forgot, and all of a sudden they come out of you. And he said, the very last golf game he ever played, this is what happened. He took a swing, and he sliced on the ball, and he got so mad, he chucked his driver further than the ball went, and then he stormed off the fairway. Now, let me ask you this. I want you to picture me doing that. How many of you could listen to your pastor storm off the fairway on Friday and then listen to him preach on Sunday? Man, that's not a good look, is it? On Friday, you're hearing all sorts of words coming out. And then on Sunday, he says, and now love one another in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be patient with one another, praying for each other. Man, it's, it's not a good look for a senior pastor, but what he demonstrated is the same thing that you and I already know is that what you fill up on will come out at some point in your life. So be careful what you fill up on. But if you fill up on the Holy Spirit, then that is what will flow out of you when life gets difficult. So the solution to feeling empty in life and feeling overdrawn is what? It is to be filled with the Spirit. The solution to having all of these dark and twisted things coming up at the wrong moments is to, it's the same answer, to be filled with 
the Spirit. And here is the invitation that God makes to every single one of you, whether you've been in church since you were in diapers or this is your first Sunday. Here is the invitation. If, if you are willing, if you invite him in, he will come and live inside of you. Isn't that an incredible offer? If you are willing to have him, he will come and set up shop and give you the patience that you need. He will give you the courage that you need. He will give you the right words in the right moment. If you will invite him in, he will give you the pressure inside to fight back and push back against the crushing pressure outside. But the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He won't force his way into your life. He will need to be invited. Now, if you want to nerd out with me just for a minute here, and if this is not your thing, just, just kind of tune out for a second. But if you look at the Greek, the original language of this word filled, it's really special. It means to be continually filled. It's not like this one-time thing that you do and then you're fine for life. It's not, it's not like an offer you sign up for and you're golden for the rest of your days. It means every single day to continuously be filled with the Spirit. This is the part that we so often forget. So... Have just a look around for a second here. How many of you have ever been to church in a tent before? This is kind of a novel thing for a lot of people, but I want you to know, if you know church history, this was like a regular state of affairs about 100 years ago. They would have these big tent meetings all of the time, and here's how it would go. They would show up in a town, they would build this big tent, and every single night they'd have some passionate preacher invite people to come and give their lives to Jesus and it was an incredible, an incredible wave, a move of God in the history. They had a name for this. You ever heard the word revival before? That's what it was. They actually called it Big Tent Revival because so many people found Jesus under a tent just like this. Do you know how they found Jesus? At the end of the night, every day, there'd be like a center aisle just like this one. And the preacher would call people forward for an altar call and they would come and they would invite Jesus into their lives. They'd invite the Holy Spirit to come and fill them up. And so many people came that that center aisle became just a, just a quicksand full of mud. They had to dump sawdust every day on it because people were like sinking in and disappearing in the mud pit down the middle. So many people came. Man, if you were in town, everybody gave their lives to Jesus. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. I mean, everybody you knew came to the front. But you know what also happens at these meetings? If you've ever been to them before, they are like 99% amazing, but there's always one guy who comes up every single day, right? There's always one guy that hears the invitation to turn their life over to Jesus, and they're on Monday and then he's there on Tuesday, and then he's there on Wednesday, and you're like, what happened between Tuesday and Wednesday that you had to do this again? And so he's sitting at the front, and he's, one of these meetings, he's crying out, his hands are raised, and he says, Lord, fill me with your spirit, fill me with your spirit. And one guy in the back, some cranky old man, he'd had enough of this. And so he waited for him to cry out one more time, and he says, Lord, fill me with the spirit. And from the back, this is what he says. He says, don't do it, Lord. He leaks. Don't do it, Lord. He leaks. Can I tell you something? This morning, we all do. Don't we? We all do. You don't just come to Jesus one day and get to know him, and then all of a sudden you're set for life. Now, what Paul is saying here by that word continually, he's saying every day when you wake up, you invite him to come back into your life and to fill you up from the inside out. Every day single day. If you've been a Christian since you were three years old, that means you. That probably especially means you because you think you're all right. For pastors, man, we need this more than anybody. The stuff that we deal with, we need the Spirit of God inside of us. And so that's his invitation to us. The truth is we all leak and we all need to come back every day and say that same simple prayer. Father God, fill me with your Spirit before you go off to work, before you deal with life, before you do your stay-at-home mom thing, you simply pray that prayer, Father God, fill me with your spirit because the truth is I can't do it on my own. That's the invitation that Paul makes. So if you look a little further here, he's like, Paul says three things will happen to you at minimum and it goes way beyond that. But if, if you are willing to invite him into your day, these three things will change. What you say, what you sing, and what you see will completely change. If you are willing to pray that prayer every morning, what you say, what you see, and what you sing will change. 
He says, you'll start to speak to each other with these incredibly truthful things like psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You'll have like words of encouragement instead of words of tear down. You'll have uplifting things to say instead of negative. When you get into that moment and somebody is pushing your buttons and you know exactly what to say, how many of you always know exactly what to say? Man, you got it locked and loaded in the chamber. When you get to that moment and the Holy Spirit is working inside you, you will be able to hold that in. Because what you say will change. What you sing will change, even if you only sing in the shower or in the car. All those things that are rolling around in your mind, the Holy Spirit will renew those things. And what you see, gratitude will begin to characterize the world that you live in because you will live with a thankful heart, always giving thanks. So this is the invitation. This is what Paul spends this whole chapter five talking about. What does it mean? And how important it is to be filled with the Spirit. And so I'm just going to invite Leanne back up here. And what I want to do is I want to close this morning. And I want to make sure that you don't miss my invitation today. Because this is not a big tent revival, but I'm kind of hoping one day it will be. I'm kind of hoping that there will be people here who maybe you've heard about Jesus before, but it's never meant anything to you. Maybe you grew up in a church that was cold and empty, and there is something that you are experiencing this morning that is nothing like what you've experienced before. And then maybe you look around and you see joy in people's faces, and our world is pretty empty of joy these days. I don't know what it is, but I want to invite you this morning to do the simple thing that Paul invites us to do to do that, to give you something to remember, I just want to give you one last object lesson, something to think about. These two cans of Coke right here, these, these are a perfect example of different people in this room right now. There is one that is full, and there is one that is empty. There is one that is full of deliciousness, and there is one that is full mostly of air. And here's what happens. When you have your heart empty, and life begins to crush in on you from all sides. When you're trying to handle life on your own and life begins to give you pressure, you fold, right? Because there wasn't any pressure on the inside to withstand what life was throwing at you. That, that's how you respond without the Spirit of God inside you. But if, if you are willing to make that step, to make that invitation, and you are willing to fill your life with the Spirit of God, man, it doesn't matter how much pressure you put on that. You see that? See, this is a perfect illustration of your life. And if you want to be able to withstand the pressure that life offers, if you want to be able to push back against a world that is so desperately pushing it on you, I want to invite you this morning to do exactly what Paul says, to be filled with the Spirit. So if you just want to bow your heads, we're going to, we're going to sing a song in a moment. I'll invite the worship team back up here. But I just want to give you a chance, and I want to speak to two kinds of people in the room here. I want to speak to you this morning if you are not a normal church goer, but you sense that there's something more to life than what you've experienced before. I want to invite you this morning to pray a simple prayer where you say, God, fill me with your spirit. I want to choose today to follow you. It's as simple as that. You just, you make one decision and you begin to turn your life and orient it towards following after Jesus. And man, we got a whole church full of people that would love to help you do that. And the other person I want to talk to this morning is those of you who are already followers of Jesus. And this is all something that you have heard before, but somewhere along the way, you've tried to do it on your own strength. You've tried to handle your problems. You've tried to withstand the pressures of life at the bottom of the ocean with just yourself. And God is inviting you this morning to and saying, invite me in and I will give you exactly what you need. So I want to get invite you to stand up and close your eyes this morning. And if this is you, I just want you to pray this prayer along with me. You don't have to say it out loud. You can say it in your head, but you can. I just want to invite you to pray a simple prayer here and pray, Father God, fill me with your spirit. Whether for you that's the first time or whether it's just something that you need to pray today because you are feeling empty or you are feeling filled up with the wrong stuff, just pray that today and tomorrow and every single morning to wake up the first thing out of your mouth is this. Father God, fill me with your spirit. You will be blown away by what he does when you simply invite him in. So God, that is our prayer this morning. We are so excited to spend the rest of today together to enjoy your creation, to enjoy community that you created. But man, Lord, please don't let us leave this tent today without thinking through that invitation and without responding to you. 
pray for us collectively today that you would fill us, that we, we might be able to withstand the pressure all around. In Jesus' name, everybody said there will be food later because everybody's going to start with one hamburger or one hot dog, right? We'll call this a verbal contract. So here's my invitation to you. Come forward and chat with one of us. If not, go and have lunch. 
and enjoy this incredible community of followers of Jesus that are so glad that you are here today. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the chance to eat together today. May we get to know someone new and grow deeper in our relationships already. May the kids have a blast with all the games and the toys and the cotton candy set up. May we just enjoy each other today. And for those, Father, who are feeling that tug on their hearts, I pray for courage for them to come forward and chat and pray with us today. So we pray this all in the powerful, in the present name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So feel free, go and grab, start with one, something to eat. And if you want to pray, please come forward. We would love to pray with you.